But to cut content, what did the anime change in episode one? Lord plus why? Kaori likes Hajime, not because he's just the main character. Let's begin from any news. It seems like you guys really enjoyed episode zero of Ari Furetta. I did. So, as promised, here's mostly everything that the anime skipped from the masterpiece that was episode one. This time covering more about Hajime and Kaori's past, including why Kaori seems to be so interested in Hajime. Like, why the fuck does she care about him? He's such a bland guy. Not right now, not the Hajime we know, but the past Hajime. Like, what the fuck did she see in him? I think someone said Hajime, like, saved, like, a couple or something in public, and Kaori was, like, like, I don't know. She was, like, shocked before she could do something, and she saw Hajime do it. So that's why she's inspired by him. I, I hear that's the reasoning. Hajime. Then diving deeper, in some ways quite literally, into the world of Tortoise and the great Tortoise Labyrinth. Get it? But first, this video is sponsored by Raid Sushi, Shadow Legends. Honestly, That's right. And Use a discount code Kaka for Raid Shadow Legends. All right. Experience. Now, let's get back to the video. Back to the regular content. Episode one, the Monster of the Abyss, covering pretty much half of the entire first volume of the novels and hey. six whole chapter novels and. Six <laughs> why did Why did he do that? Why Why did he do that? That was kind of cool. Though. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Covering pretty much half of the entire. <laughs> Why is you getting split in half right here? Volume of the novels and six whole chapters from the manga. Damn. If you the light novel art is so good. The light novel art is so good compared to the fucking anime. Why did the anime First get done this dirty? And six Look at this shit. Look at the monsters. There's actually impact. When I see these monsters, I'm like, wow. I feel imminent threat. I feel like there's actually danger involved. But when I watch the anime, when I watch these CGI monsters, I'm just like... Great. More fucking CGI monsters that we've seen over and over again. Hajime, just shoot the fucking monsters. Let's go with it. Let's, let's get it over. If you recall from last episode, Captain Meld had just brought the students to the outpost. Again, crazy how Meld looks like this in the light novel. Meld just looks like a douchebag, honestly, in the light novel. In the anime, he just, he just looks like a very, like a, it's, he looks like a dad, like a nice dad. But here, he just looks like a fucking dick. Town of Horad, so that everyone could gain some infield experience within the great Orcus Labyrinth. Though the deepest floor that they could confidently go was to the 20th. It was known as the floor that separated the skilled adventurers from the amateurs. <laughs> the deep- What the fuck are you-, you gonna tell me Koki is more- I, I guess at this point, right? He is the hero after all. We're just a synergist. Okay, okay. Okay. The deepest anyone had ever gone was to floor 65. However, no one had been able to reach those depths in a while. Even getting to floor 40 was considered to be a- You know, I was wondered. What happened to the previous batch of heroes? People have reached 65 before. I guess maybe it's just people in this world that existed. But this, the heroes that the church summons, the, the kingdom summons, I was thinking, what happened to the previous batch of heroes? Do they exist anymore? Did, did they all just get killed? Did they all get killed and decide to you know, summon a new batch? Is this spoilers what I'm asking for right now? I'm always thinking, like, surely we can't be the only batch of heroes that was ever summoned into this world, right? A superhuman feat. So the 20th floor became known as the standard level to indicate one skill. For the time that this labyrinth has existed, every floor down till the 47th was completely mapped out. But because each floor spanned a few kilometers in every direction, it took at least a month or two to completely map a new one. Though, just having the first 20 floors mapped out significantly reduces the amount of danger that any of them would face while traversing. Nah, just go and run, no vision allowed. Would I truly want to know that? You already know the answer to this, that's gonna be spoilers. Dungeon. Now, this expedition wasn't scheduled for till the day after. So, Hajime was just spending his time laying in this small bedroom at the inn, pondering all that could happen while in the dungeon. It was around 1 or 2 a.m. when he finally decided to go to bed. But that's when he heard a knock on Cowdy. the door. It was a bit strange because although this time at night wouldn't be considered late for him, yeah. to the average person, this wasn't a standard time to be awake. It's a booty call. Cowdy. Cowdy's coming in right now. So, he was suspicious at who it could be. And even Ooh, more so when he oh, opened Jesus. the door to see that it was Kaori standing there. She wanted to come in and talk, and as much as Hajime she wanted to come in, all right. he wanted to say no, he just couldn't deny the cute face that Kaori was putting on. <laughs> as we saw, Kaori was pleading with Hajime to not go down to the dungeon because of the foreboding dreams that she'd been having. I mean, she was right, though. It was a fucking philo- it, it, it was a prophecy. She was actually trying to warn us. Act but then again, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to us, right? I think Hajime, what, what kind of life would he have wanted to live? You know, stay up here and be safe the entire time or fall to the labyrinth, you know, witness almost near-death experiences a couple times, more, maybe more than a couple times, but come up badass with the harm. But what we didn't see was when she brought up the story of how she first met Hajime. Well, hmm. more like noticed rather than formally met. Here we go, here we go. It was back in junior high and a 
actual reason as to why Kaori loves Hajime. Young Let's kid go. was getting bullied by some thug. Kaori okay. was there watching the situation unfold, but was too scared to intervene. What's a girl like this gonna go? Is this fucking go in and step in and just like, you know, fight a thug? Say, stop bullying! No, this is when Hajime steps in, she right? She hoped that one of the adults passing by would step in to help, but everyone just kept walking. Hajime was there as well. Oh, and shit. Although he was scared to the bone, he just. Here's what I think what's gonna happen. I think he's gonna step in, he's gonna say, stop bullying, but then he himself is just gonna get fucking beat. Couldn't stand by and do nothing. When he saw that the thug was about to start beating on the kid, oh? Hajime threw himself at the thug's feet and wouldn't let go. This act. Mm, I mean, I mean, it, this is brave, right? I mean, he is just pretty much submitting here, saying, please stop. Right, I, I don't know. What, what do you expect Hajime to do? You expect him to go in and just like fight this guy? Like, no, he, he doesn't have those powers. He's just a fucking degenerate weeb right now back on Earth. So it's like, yeah, I, I mean, it kind of looks bad, right? But if you can riz a girl up by getting on your knees at all fours like this in front of another guy and a girl can get rizzed up, I say that is impressive on its own. Actually worked and it helped to defuse the situation. But to Hajime... He embarrassed the thug into leaving. That's... That's an art on its own, you know, embarrassing the opponent to leave. He merely thought of it as some pathetic display of weakness. I mean, all he really did was just kneel in the middle of the street. Yeah. Kaori, though, she was amazed. She saw it as some incredible feat of strength. Hmm. You see, standing up to someone is easy when you're stronger than them. But when you're weaker and you want to stand up, that is brave. Kaori is actually such a good person. Why do I shit on Kaori so much? I think it's just because of how we were separated from the main... Uh, main hero hero party and I kind of like I kind of harbored like a negative will against everyone there but then again it kind of contradicts myself because I love Suzuku what's up with that why do I hate Kaori so much I don't know but when you're weak it takes a whole lot more strength to put yourself in that same position true so when Kaori saw Hajime stand up to someone who was quite she should have specifically told him that hey you know you're so fucking weak you are so fucking weak, but you're so brave. And you getting on your knees because you're weak, it just made me fall in love with you. What a confession that would be, huh? How would you even feel about that? Visibly much stronger than him, she was astonished by his act of courage. And from that day forward, she considered him to be the strongest person that she knew. Which Damn. is why she was so happy to find out that they were going to the same- And then everyone hated us because of her. <laughs> well, it's not her fault. Is it her fault that, you know, everyone hates us? Kind of. Can you blame her? I don't know. It's not really that simple, right? I mean, she's just trying to be a good person. That's all she's just trying to be. And if other people are going to be shitty to us because they feel jealous that the most popular girl is giving us attention, is that our fault? Sorry, is that her fault? I think she's indirectly involved, but I don't think you can place the blame on her. I think you got to blame the people that are jealous in the first place. In middle school together, she tried day after day to become friends with him. But whenever she'd attempt to start a conversation, he'd always dismiss it or just be sleeping. <laughs> Giga Chad. Hajime never knew that Kaori saw him this way. Everything was finally starting to make sense. And he knew now why Kaori always showed so much interest. And it's why she was worried about him now. If Hajime does something reckless to protect someone else like how he did for that kid, then things might not end the same way as it did with that thug. Kaori hmm. couldn't bear the thought of something bad happening to Hajime. But deep down, she knew that it was a futile ask. Because he would she do it anyways. She could tell that Hajime was working hard to assist his classmates in any way that he could. He just always had a heroic heart, huh? Hajime just always had a good heart. Even here, after getting bullied and just kind of just still getting shit on, he's still reading books, still trying to learn trust, still trying to be useful, still put himself out there, fucking sacrifices himself. And what does he get in return? He gets betrayed. It's kind of insane how he just let go of the whole path of revenge. Like, if I was in his shoes, bro, the first thing I'd be doing is just fucking torturing that bully Daisuke, but he's just a good person. How do you just kind of move beyond that? Just an enlightened being. There was no way he was going to let everyone go without him. But Hajime knew that he was weak as well, which is why they came up with the compromise of having Kaori protect him. When the next morning came, Hajime expected the labyrinth's entrance to just be a simple opening into a cave. But instead, it was like the mm. entrance to a museum. Giant pillars and an arch created a massive opening into the downward Again, dungeon. Even the art here just looks like menacing. Yo, the manga art actually goes so hard. Kind of want to read the manga now. A massive opening into the downward leading dungeon. And all along the outskirts were shops, adventurers, and a few shady people either conversing with each other few or shady trying people. to sell their goods. At the entrance, there seemed to be a receptionist type lady. She was there to... This is skipped in the anime, right? What the... 
fuck? Are you telling me we got to miss out on the guild labyrinth like receptionist girls, man? Come on. Every isekai has to have these kind of receptionist girls at the guild HQ. I just feel like we haven't had one in Arifurata. Check the status plate of every person walking into the dungeon. You see, the government put in place a plate check policy in order to avoid losing too many men. It was a process run by the local guild, since the government was too busy with preparing for war. Now, everything seemed so lively on the outside, but once they were in the dungeon itself, the atmosphere was- Yeah, I know it's from like a different anime. Clearly, it's not from Arifurata, but like, those girls like actually did exist in the source material though, right? Not those art style, I'm just saying those receptionist type girls. It was completely different. Much less people were around them, and the walls were all dimly lit by a special mineral called Green Glowstone. In fact, the entire labyrinth was an excavated vein of that very ore. As such, it made it possible to see their surroundings without a torch or magic item. It did The most annoying shit in the labyrinth, especially dark ones like this, is that you can't see what the fuck is going on. I hate- in, in like episodes where it's like happening during the nighttime, like right now in Arifura to right now, we have a little bit of the moon that's helping us out, but goddamn, we're fighting in the nighttime right now, or whenever it's in the dark labyrinth. You can't see shit what's going on, especially on YouTube, because you have those like visual filters I have to use to get by, you know, copyright stuff. And on top of that, I can't find a fucking good thumbnail to use because everything is so fucking dark. It's so fucking annoying when we're in these dark situations, bro. Illuminate! It didn't take very long after venturing deeper into the first floor to come across their first set of monsters. Quick but weak creatures known as rat men stood before them. Everyone rat rushed into formation. <laughs> Koki's group of combat specialists held the front line, while Kaiori's group of mages cast some spells from range. Because Koki was a knight, he was given a sword artifact known as the oh. Holy Sword. It was blessed with the- Who gave him this fucking armor then? Why is it color-coded matching with the fucking sword, bro? Why does he just get all this shit, bro? Element of light, and had magical properties that not only boosted his physical strength, but okay. also weakened any enemy that was struck by the light. Re Doesn't that mean he kind of just counters the demons? I don't know, you would think that demons have like a natural weakness to light affinity, right? Then again, I, I don't know, I'm just thinking like season one, end of season one when he, when, you know, Koki was fighting that guy, the girl, the demon. He was struggling, but that was because of like a power gap, right? Like, just because you have an elemental advantage doesn't mean you're gonna just win, but... D does elemental advantage play like that for demons? Ryutaro was a monk, meaning he fought with- Koki got the artifacts from the church and the kingdom due to being the hero, so they just have that shit set up. So they're just waiting for the hero class to just kind of just like pop up and like here here's your here's your pay to win material here's your pay to win gear while everyone else is wearing like leather like level one fucking leather gear koki gets a full straight up end game like full set that's with some his bullshit fists, his equipment were also artifacts with magical properties a pair of unbreakable gauntlets and greaves that were capable of this is melds unleashing enchanted shockwaves finally shizuku was a swordsman wait wait so wait, wait was, was that was that melt weakened and had I, I missed that i missed that i missed that, that was Hold struck up. by the light Okay. Ryutaro was a monk. Me okay, Ryutaro. This guy doesn't really get much, like... I don't know. I, we hardly get dialogue lines up. I mean, I hardly ever noticed that he is there. I, I do recognize him, but I just don't remember him doing anything impactful. Meaning he fought with his fists. His equipment were also artifacts with magical properties. Okay. A pair of unbreakable gauntlets. I thought we were hyping up Meld for a second. It's like, oh shit, Meld out these gauntlets? And greaves that were capable of unleashing enchanted shockwaves. Finally, Shizuku was a swordsman. So she wielded a blade that seemed undefeated swordmaster in Japan, right? Undefeated! Like a cross between a katana and a shamshir. Her sheer skill with the sword gained her a lot of recognition with the tortoise knights. Oh? It was these three offensive spe- The knights recognized Shizuku? Oh shit, and one of the coolest moments was Shizuku getting a new sword from Hajime. I, was, was, I wish it was a little bit more explained about what the significance of the sword was, you know, new material, blah blah blah. But like, Shizuku getting the new sword, new blade in the finale was one of the hype moments. Specialists combined with the support of the mages that allowed them to reach the 20th floor without any issues. In fact, the only threat that anyone faced was the traps scattered throughout the dungeon. <laughs> Fate, Astolfo. To counter this, the soldiers had a tool to detect them, known as a fair scope. It read the flow of mana that these magically based traps would emit, though it could only detect around 80% of them due to its limited range. Oh, and that's when Daisuke fucking... Cause he saw some glowing shit, right? Yeah, 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 he's, he's climbing up right now. He's trying to touch some shit. He's like, oh, look at the fancy material. I'm gonna use this material to make like fucking wedding ring for Kaori. It's like, you dumbass. And that's what gets him teleported, right? That's why before entering any room, yeah. the knights first had you to clear it by idiots. scanning for any traps. They eventually reached the final parts of the 20. Makes me wonder, was that intentional by Daisuke? No, he's not smart enough to understand where the fucking teleportation rock is. No. What if he was like, 
I don't know when he got in contact with the demons. I don't even know if he's working with the demons. Like, they're still not showing the face of the person, the girl that's, like, controlling Daisuke right now in Season 2. Maybe it's a different thing. Maybe there's no deeper meaning here other than he was being fucking dumb, and they just happened to get teleported. Then he decided to do something shitty on top of that by betraying Hajime there. I don't know. It's probably... It'd be, it'd be way too much to think that, believe that the demons were somehow controlling Daisuke to do this to... To fucking shit on Hajime, who has yet to even turn into this OP character yet. It does, doesn't make sense. 20th floor. And the tunnel walls became narrow, resulting in everyone having to go single file and break formation. In the distance, Meld noticed a monster camouflaging along the wall. It was the beefier rat man that we see in the anime. A formerly Can you see it? Can you see it? What the fuck am I looking at right here? Guys, straight up. What the fuck is this? I don't see shit. I don't see fucking anything. This is why I fucking hate art in the caves or the dark or shit like this in the nighttime. You don't know what the fuck is going on. I can't, you know, the manga panels look so different. They look fucking intimidating. It's the shading of the white and the black, right? But in the anime, you have shit like this. I just see two fucking glowing horns and I'm just like, okay, random CGA monster 234 next. The rock mount. Contrary to what we saw, it wasn't Hajime that it was I don't attacking, see shit, bro. but rather the girls in the back. Which is why Koki used such a powerful attack like Celestial Flash to cut it clean in half. Oh? The attack was so strong that the force struck the wall behind it to reveal the gem known as a glance crystal. These didn't have any special properties or anything. That's what teleported us, right? Yeah, we're just going through the events of what happened before Daisuke grabbed it. But they were rather popular amongst the nobles as jewelry. In fact, it was one of the top three Wedding. jewels used in proposal rings. Cowdy, right? You fucking, like, you think Kaori would go for you right now, you fucking idiot? When Kaori heard this, she couldn't help but comment on how lovely that sounded, all while quickly stealing a glance in Hajime's direction. <laughs> it was so quick that no one should have noticed. Oh? And no one did it did, happen in the anime? Those who were already oh, 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 oh. That would be Shizuku no. and Hiyama. Yep, Hiyama saw this. This fucking creep, man. What are you doing staring at Kaori? And couldn't help but feel a little bit jealous. This piece so of shit. So he just outright said that he'll go get her the he looks like just as like a douchebag in the fucking manga too. Look at him, man. Ooh. Then, as you know, the gem was a trap that teleported everyone straight to the 65th floor, dropping them on a bridge where on one end was the behemoth and at the other, a horde of skeletons known as- <laughs> These monsters should be so- I, I, I want him to just show me the manga art for this because these monsters should be so threatening looking, but again, I just, I, I just see CG and I just start laughing. Trump soldiers. The knights recognize Look at the this! Oh my god! This is actually, and these are just the skeleton knights, right? These are the random skeleton knights being spawned. Look at this shit. It's as creatures common to the 38th floor. So that made them the easier of the two enemies to face. I mean, the behemoth oh was my a creature God. that not even the legendary adventurer who made Not even the same. Not even the same. And this makes me even sadder that all those other CGI monsters that we saw in the labyrinth, all these different monsters that we keep seeing in the anime, they could be very intimidating. But... The anime just shits on it. Like, what the fuck? I mean, some people could argue that some people actually say the shitty CGI art and the absurdity of it and how people shit on Harifurata saying, look at the shitty CGI art. That's what kind of made it go like viral. People, it got people talking about it, right? Did it help market the anime? I don't know. I don't know. Some people say that it's so bad that it's good. But if you look at the manga art like this, imagine like all the potential. Look at all this shit. That could have been, that, that, that could have been, but it just won't be. Now we just have random CGI. Look at this shit. Look at the eye. Look at the fucking shading of the black and white, the aura, the black lightning going on here. It's a disappointment in the anime. Made it this far could beat. Putting Meld in a position where he had no choice but to cast the impenetrable barrier spell known as Hollowed Ground. Though this would only buy them about a minute's worth of time since the spell didn't last very long. And then Hajime the comes in. charged the barrier and the barrier did its job. But the impact shook the bridge and many of the students began to panic. One of the girls fell forward, right in front of a Trom soldier. It oh. was about to strike her with its sword when- Was that one of the farm girls that Hajime saves, right? The farmer girls? The ground that it was standing on began to crumble. No? A massive pit opened up and many Trom soldiers fell into the abyss below. Never mind. Turns out, Hajime had used his transmutation oh. to protect this girl. It was yeah, no, no, it, it was the same girl. It was the girl that kept coming back, you know, to say thank you in season one, right? It's her. That's part of like uh, the farming faction. The method of eliminating many Trom soldiers at once. So he continued to do so while keeping an eye on his surroundings. Goated. Everything was a mess. All the Everyone's panicking, and the synergist Hajime is using his skills. His, his, he's using his skills to fucking collapse the Trom soldiers. He's putting in so much fucking work while everyone is cowards. Bro, Hajime is brave. Students were either swinging their swords or firing spells at random. 
If this went on much longer, then someone was definitely going to end up dying. What they needed now was a leader. Sacrifice. Someone who could provide hope and clear the fear that all these students were currently- Mel- Mel said that he'd come and get back at him, right? He, I mean, Hatsumi puts, puts himself there, and then Mel says something like, We'll definitely come save you, but this is before Daisuke does his bullshit. Facing. Of course, it couldn't be himself, so he ran to the best person that he could think of, Koki. You see, what did all he this do? time, Koki was arguing what with were Mel you doing? trying to get permission to take on the behemoth. But what? Mel refused over and over, which hmm. only made Koki frustrated. It Whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? We needed a decisive leader to step in and take action. Koki wanted to fight the behemoth. Meld would not give him, you know, the... Uh, Mel, Mel said no. Do you... And then there was some... And then time is wasted there arguing. Whose fault is that? Is it, it's Koki's fault? Why do you think it's Koki's fault there? Because technically, if Ko uh, Well, he would probably just die, right? If Koki just went in there, he'd probably just die. It's... Meld is probably making the right decision by saying, no, fuck that shit, we need to get out of there. But didn't we, if, if, if we could just get out of there, it'd be as very simple, but we're just arguing right now. We need to just leave. Well, maybe the biggest leadership thing then is to just agree and then just get the fuck out. Instead of just fighting, we could have just gotten the fuck out, but we're just kind of wasting time and no one's doing anything. It didn't help that Ryu Tadoro was there boosting his ego as well. So when Haji... Koki's hero syndrome acted up. I think... I think the manga and the light novel covers more of Koki's like self-righteousness that we don't really see in the anime. Because people say in the anime he's like less of like a douchebag, right? Because in the anime he holds himself much more like less arrogantly. In the manga and the light novel, I hear that he's just more of this like self-insert white knight coming to save people when no one even fucking asked for it, making more problems because of his own ego. Maybe this is a, a situation just like that. Mel is more experienced, so Koki just wanted to charge in. Yeah. No, you're probably right. Yeah, you're right. Hajime came by, he grabbed Koki by the collar and started yelling some sense back into him. Oh? Seeing the quiet Hajime? student berating him made Koki realize the situation that he and his classmates were currently facing. He decided to accept the role that Hajime gave him. Damn. But before he could get to... He wouldn't listen to Mel, but he listened to Hajime just because, like, a, the weakest student is fucking talking to him. <laughs> the other side of the bridge, the barrier's time limit was up, and the beast charged headfirst into them. Hajime transmuted a wall to lessen the force of the impact, but... Transmute is becoming the most important skill here, bro. How are we looking down on the synergist transmute skill? It's doing so much fucking work. It still sent those who were on the front line flying backward, immobilizing Meld and many of the other knights. Koki saw this as his opportunity to step up. So okay. he got Shizuku and Ryutoro to support him while he can- Oh shit. This is the Rising of the Shield Hero same theme. Wait, 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 wait. This is one of the best themes from Rising of the Shield Hero. Saw this as his opportunity to step up. So he got Shizuku and Ryutoro to support oh. him while he cast his strongest spell, Divine Wrath. It was Koki looks pretty Celestial sick here. Flash, just much larger. The light from his sword enveloped the entire monster. But once everything settled, not a single scratch could be seen on it. The what? only thing different about the behemoth was that it now seemed angry. Its body began to seep out dark red mana, Bro, and look it at gave this off such art, a murderous man. glare that even Koki thought he was going to die. Everyone began to retreat as the beast but who didn't retreat? charge. It made its biggest impact yet, oh my and the shockwave God, paralyzed many of the students including Koki. Dude, this entire shield hero theme playing in the background is so fucking good, but look at this shit. Look at the art of the behemoth, bro. As Koki attacks him, he just... Like, I can feel... I can feel danger here. I can feel actual despair looking at this. But in the anime, I'm just laughing at these fucking CGI monsters, man. Please, please do the anime justice. And the shockwave paralyzed many of the students, including Koki. Only Hajime, Mel, Kaori, and a few other knights were able to move easily. Oh. Everyone else was on the floor trying to recover. Now, considering the dire situation, Meld grit his teeth as he had no choice but to give Kaori and Hajime the order to prioritize Koki's escape over everyone else's. Yes. What? Did that happen in the anime? Did Meld actually say that? I'm sure Meld is under orders, right? To have uh, the class hero be summoned like that, and to give you know, Koki all the church's holy relic equipments, that's a lot of investment, so obviously he is the priority. You can't lose... Koki, like, who cares if Daisuke dies, right? Who cares if these other fodders, like, even, like, Hajime dies, right? It doesn't really matter. Like, we need to prioritize Koki, but did Meld actually say that in the anime? Do I remember that? Maybe. Fuck, I don't remember, but damn, that's cool. See, Meld was willing to give up everyone else, including himself, if it meant that Koki...
including himself, right? This is ultimately, he is still, I still respect Meld, right? I still respect Meld in the greater context of everything. I think Meld is still doing the right decision. He would live. That's just how valuable he was. Hajime just couldn't accept an order like that. So he proposed another idea that would focus the danger around himself. So instead of sacrificing everyone else to save Koki, Hajime would sacrifice himself to save everyone else. But then it's like, they said that he would come, they would come back. But then after doing all this shit, what the fuck is Daisuke doing on the side right now, bro? Daisuke is not doing anything. This fucking piece of shit coward, it's his fault that we got transported here. He's probably not doing any of the fighting. He's just fucking hiding behind Shizuku probably. And even then, he decides to betray us. Like, what the fuck? It was the very thing that Kaori wanted to avoid. But seeing as this could be the only way to save everyone, Meld accepted it. Hashime ran straight towards the behemoth. When Kaori saw this, she tried her best to call Hajime back, slowly becoming more and more distraught as Meld just told her to focus on healing Koki. Reason being that Koki was the key to everyone else's survival. Aside from- This is probably true too, right? Like, you have to keep him healed up. Like, if we're talking about object objective things to keep the party alive, probably that's right. Noble celebrated Hajime's death due to the useless god's chosen dying. Fucking insane, bro. It's just- it's just crazy how evil these pieces of shit in the churches are. From Melt himself, he was or the, the next strongest too. among them. So his strength would be needed to safely guide everyone out of the dungeon. Melt had to reassure Kaiori that this was all part of the plan. She really had no choice but to believe him. And Cap. finally cast Heaven's Cap. Blessing on Koki. This was a high-level healing spell that not only healed wounds, but also restored mana. With this, it didn't take long for Koki to be back at fighting strength. Great. And once Help fully us. recovered, Help he us. immediately cleared the 200 Tromp soldiers that were standing. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. The art here of this guy, the monk guy, the fr our friend that's like a brawler, he looks fucking sick in the manga, but we don't get any of him in the anime. In front of him, all with a single celestial flash. The pa Okay, okay, celestial flash here. Okay, the manga art, it goes pretty hard. I like it. It's, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm a fan of Koki. Like, Koki looks really cool in the manga so far, right? Like, we know what kind of a douchebag he is, but, like, he looks pretty cool in the manga panels like this. Celestial flash. The path was only cleared for a moment, as many more Tron began to immediately spawn. Many of the students were still panicking, believing that their situation was hopeless. I mean, it really was nothing short of a miracle that none of them had died yet. But this time Meld took the lead, and he oh? cleared the new wave of Trom with a move that was even more powerful than Koki's. What? This seemed to give a little bit of hope to the students, as they looked what as if the they attack? were gaining a bit of confidence. But in actuality, it was due to a mental focus spell that Kaiori had cast. The students began huh? to remember their training, and started to follow Meld's orders as he- Mental focus, like, brings everyone back, no more panic. Okay, so Kaori actually- Holy shit, if you think about Kaori's contribution in this team, this party right now, it's kind of insane. I guess when you compare Kaori to characters like fucking Yue, Shea, like Tio, it's just unfair, right? It's, it's, again, it's, it's just so unfair to compare characters like that. But right now, Kaori's putting a lot of work. Like, she's actually one of the most useful units here right now. He gave them, eventually securing their path of escape barely moments before Hajime's transformation. Damn, look at Behemoth again! Behemoth. This brings us back to the anime. Where we see Hajime the traitor. running the Behemoth only to get hit by a stray fireball this spell, ultimately leading to his descent into the abyss. Everything after that is shown from Hajime. Like, is it just as simple as Daisuke thinking like, hey, I'm still jealous of you with Kaori. I'm just going to kill you right now. Like, he just, he, that, that's, that's all he's thinking? Uh, stray? I mean, Annie News can't spoil it at this moment, right? This is still episode one, like, cut content. He's... He's got to, like, say this in the context of people that's only watch episode one. So he can't, you know, like, spoil it right now. But it's just crazy to me. In this situation, like, you would think that Daisuke would have some kind of, like, awareness of, this is all my fault. But even when I'm fucking up, and even when I'm being a coward right now, hiding behind Suzuku, not fighting, Hajime's out there, putting his life on the line. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fucking backstab him right now. Like, why? What is your deal? You're still that down bad? His perspective. What we didn't see, though, was the story. He probably got angry that Kaori was there with Hajime. Like, like Mel was trying to pull Kaori out. That sounds weird, but you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Story of how the surviving students escaped from the labyrinth. Cause remember, not only are they highly underleveled for the area that they're in, but they're also 18 floors deep in uncharted territory. No so map. How exactly did they make it out alive? Yeah, what the fuck? Well, how? Let's start from right after Koki fell to his supposed death. Kaori was in such a state of. Excuse me. I think that's a I think that's a, not a typo, but he said that wrong. Hold up. Exactly. Did they make it out alive? Hold up. Well, let's start from right after Koki fell to his. 
I think you meant to say Hatsumi there. His supposed death. Kaori was in such a state of disarray that she had to be knocked unconscious by Mel. Otherwise, <laughs> she would have. I wanted to see that. Just yeet, go to sleep. Just followed Hajime right into the abyss. She refused to believe that Hajime. Did that happen in the anime? I forget small details like this. Maybe it did happen. It was gone. It just wasn't something that her mind could comprehend. But their current focus needed to be on surviving. And that's really all that mattered now. So it was the best course of action to prevent the loss of anyone else. The students peered up at the stairs, and it looked as if it went on forever. Just okay, how, how did they get out, though? An endless tunnel of darkness. They must have been climbing for hours before finally coming across a magic circle imprinted on a wall. What? It showed no signs of being a trap, so teleportation Mel activated it to see what would happen. A secret corridor opened up, which led straight to a room on the 20th floor. What? Everyone let out a breath of relief. Even that's, a little, that's a little too convenient. You, you just skipped all those floors. You just happened to walk across the magic sequence and boom, you're back where you started. Oh, okay, okay. Even Koki was leaning over himself saying, Daisuke was jealous when he remembered that Kaori visited Hajime in a night. How the fuck would he even know Kaori visited? Like, that was 2 a.m. Everyone was sleeping. You're telling me Daisuke is such a fucking creep. He was stalking a Kaori at like 2 in the fucking morning? Straight. He what? He was there? Insane. Since he could finally relax. But they still weren't safe yet. It was too soon to stop and rest since they still had 20 more floors to ascend. They avoided as many fights as possible. And the fights that they did have to take on, the knights took care of. Eventually, they did reach the so main we just, So we just got bailed out, thanks to the magic circle, which won't be explained. Yay, lucky sometimes. Many students collapsed out of exhaustion, or just sheer relief. And they didn't want to do anything other than go to their rooms and call it a day. So while everyone returned to the inn, one person stayed behind Daisuke. to visit the town. You he piece went and found a spot where he was sure that no one could hear or see him. Then oh. he squatted down and buried his face in his legs, in a way that if you saw him from behind, you'd be sure that this person was depressed. Because he's guilty, right? Because it ate him up from inside. And that's the thing I want more of. I want him to feel super guilty, and I want him to, like, not die immediately. I just want, like, mental torture. I just want to torture this guy. I I I'm demented, but I just want fucking revenge, bro. And this kid needs to fucking suffer, especially what he's doing to Mel right now in Season 2. Holy shit, he's annoying. In reality, this student was ecstatic over what he had just accomplished. But in the anime, he was so guilty. Because, like, in the anime, after he did that shit, there was many moments of him where Shizuku or try to talk to him, like Daisuke, and he would look so guilty. And I thought it was, like, eating up inside. He was happy. He was ecstatic over what he just accomplished, getting rid of, like, Heisen. Like, what, what do you think? The Kaori just gonna come after you now? Well, you think that he's gonna, she's gonna visit you at 2 in the morning in a nightgown now? Like, what? And he was giddy over the fact that he had just taken out his supposed love rival. Chalking up his act- Like, love rival? We're not, we don't even see you! You're not even part of the fucking- There is no triangle here! What the fuck? ...to some form of deserved divine punishment. As he snickered away in the corner, one Insane. classmate approached him and immediately called him out for being the murderer. What? Who? how they never would have thought Shizuku that did, the first right? murderer they'd meet in another yeah, This is the moment I'm talking about in the anime. Shizuku kind of talks to Daisuke, and Daisuke gets very nervous, but there was a classmate that... that there was a classmate that approached him? ...world would be their own classmate. But this person wasn't scolding him. Instead, they were, in a roundabout kind of way, blackmailing Hiyama to become what? their slave. The person... That's controlling, or basically, I thought it was a demon that was talking to Daisuke. But we saw it in the last episode, and, and I, I'm, I'm about to release the episode after today's stream. But there is a moment during, you know, the, the whole shit going on in the kingdom right now of everyone being possessed, and Daisuke is talking to some girl. We saw a side of her face, but that's it. I couldn't recognize what this girl looked like, but she didn't really seem like a demon. There's a character right now saying, there's someone blackmailing Daisuke right now. And Strazor is saying spoiler in chat, so... Hmm... What a... What are the odds an episode 1 cut content from any news would give me the answers of what I need to know in season 2 right now, of who is controlling Daisuke? We don't know who it is, but it's a classmate. There is another traitor? What? What other character is there? What other- It was a girl, but which girl character would have the motivation to do such a thing? What? 
not that they needed anything right now, but there was something that this person wanted. What? And they needed help to get it. So, when the time- I just can't even imagine, like, uh, unless it's like one of those girls that we've seen so- Cause like, who else? Who else in the hero party of the girls gets prominent screen time? It's the barrier girl. I hope it's not the barrier girl that's you know, doing that shit. There's a couple girls that sometimes gets a little bit more screen time, but if it's not them, I just can't imagine just like a random character just showing up. If it's just a random character that, that is controlling Daisuke, it would be kind of disappointing. But if it's a character that we've seen a couple times, and, we're, and I've been led to believe that they're a good character, but it was actually the traitor, oh my god, bro. What a fucking twist. Wow. This show is cooking. Time comes. Hiyama has to help this person. Huh. Otherwise, Kaori would be the first to find out who killed huh. Hajime. As for who this mystery classmate was, well, yeah. that will remain just that. A mystery. What do you mean that will remain just that? I'm the, bro! I mean, you can't tell me this shit right now in season one, right? This is stuck in season one cut content, right? Because we're in season two. We're deep into season two right now. And now I'm trying to figure out who the fuck it is, but that's insane. So that brings us to about halfway through episode one. But <laughs> rather than... Sp what the fuck? Oh, yeah, because all that shit happened immediately. He got thrown in, right? Because the anime starts off with, Oh! A bunch of shit happens, he gets dropped down, and it's like, what the fuck is going Spend on? another 15 minutes finishing that, I think this is a good place to stop and split the video into two parts. Mm. Otherwise, this video wouldn't have come out this weekend. <laughs> My man is farming. Next episode, it's gonna go part two. Okay, tell, okay. We still okay. Got plenty more to cover. So, oh, if yes. you want to see more of this, then yes, feel yes, free yes. to drop a like or comment. Yes, give any news your subscriptions, your likes, always making these great anime content for me to understand cut content like this. But it's just fucking insane. It's just fucking insane that there's a character from episode one that's been hinted, that's controlling Daisuke, that I didn't even... I thought it was just a demon. Why did I just think it was a demon? I don't know. I, it's, the, it's the most intuitive thought, right? That the demon is controlling, you know, Daisuke, and that's how the current kingdom is under attack by the demons, but the church... Do, I don't know. It, we're getting like a three-way... You no, know, this is a three-way orgy now. I thought it was just the church and the demons that's just fucking us up. But there's also someone from Arsa that's fucking us up, too. Holy shit, there are so many rats, but anyways, we do these reactions live on stream, 7 a.m. PSD on YouTube and Twitch. Hope to see you there.